Now that your glue is dried enough, we can scrape it. So let's pull off the middle clamp. And I like to just leave it in the clamps, the other two, while I scrape it. That stays a little more steady. This extra glue should come right off. There we go. Now we do the other side. So now I'll untie, um, clamp it, flip it over. And don't worry too much about these little black areas. They're touching the pipes. Those will all be planed off in the next step. So take it, scrape it all off. Doesn't have to be perfect. We just want the worst of it gone. All right. Once that's done, we need to make it flat. So that's a planer. From the safety test, we learned that with a glued up board, we need to make it a little bit wider to open up the planer one more turn before we start planing, which means we'll have to go through a few more times, but that's okay. So usually this is set at 13 16 It probably is now. And normally I'll just lower it one turn. In this case, because it's a glued up board, I want to go two turns down. All right, so now there's a bigger gap between the pointer and the red line. So open up the gate and we're going to start planing. The first one may only take off a hair, but I just want to make sure with a glued up board that we're not overdoing it on the planer. All right, now like normal, we'll raise it one turn and we'll flip it and do it again. Okay, again, one more turn and this should be my last run. We're now at the red line. I flipped it again and doing it one more time. gone through your three times and there's still issues on both sides, go ahead and turn it one more. Even though it'll be a hair thinner than we normally do, it'll still work fine for the lid. In my case, both of them look pretty good. Now I can run it through the wide belt sander and move on. If something this big gets stuck in the planer, take a piece of scrap wood and push it behind it. That piece of scrap will just push your lid right out. Happens all the time, especially with big pieces. Now we're ready to run your lid through the wide belt sander. Now I've already set it like normal. I took it, put it in the knob, raised it till it stopped, and then turned it only three times instead of four. It's so big that I don't want to overdo it. Now in this case, we want to make sure that we hit the whole thing with a sander. So I take a pencil and I draw squiggly lines across the grain on both sides. So it's as simple as when those lines disappear, I know I'm done sanding. Hopefully it only takes once on each side, but usually it's three or four. So the air is on, the vent, the vacuum is on, the air to this is on. Turn it on and get it going. Now it's so big, I normally will want to turn it angle, but it doesn't fit quite mu as much. So I can only angle it just a little bit. Now listen. Do you hear any screeching sounds? Do you hear any sounds that are not normal? Now, that first pass is always the first one, the one that's mistaken, uh, and the rest of them usually go pretty easy. So I'm done with the first pass. I've still got a little bit of lines here and here, so I'll have to do it again. Flip it, raise it uh, three times, and do it again. This side turned out perfect. There are no lines on it, so I've only got one more pass on this side, and now I'm done. So I'm only going to raise it two times and go perfectly straight. That'll minimize my cross grain scratches. All right, so I want the same thing on this side. Uh, right now I have angle cuts, so I want to go through straight. I'll only go one turn and do it again. my last run. Now it's time to square the lid. This is the same procedure that we use over and over and over again. Now, at the table saw, normally we would joint it first and put that jointed edge against the fence. Now we've already got two good edges. They've already been jointed and cut in a previous step. So my two edges are good. 
pick one. So I like that one, and that's going to go against this fence, against the back here. So I'm going to mark it. That's good. I'm going to cut this end. That will be good. And that will mean that that's a 90 degree angle. We'll sand all these marks off later. So my goal here is just to trim off the end to make it flat. So you back it up and line it up so that you're only going to cut off as little as possible to make it a nice square end. Hold on to it with your fingers so my thumb is here wrapped around the top and just push it across. Stop as soon as you're done with the cut and back it up. Don't go all the way through. Back it up. And that's all I cut off right there. So now I know this end and this edge are square to one another. Now I take it to another table saw and cut a length and a width. Here at this table saw, we're going to cut it to length and width. So here's your, here's your sizes. My length cut is 23 inches. Now we cut at 24 when we started. So you should only be cutting off about an inch, maybe a hair less. So we cut 23. Right there is 23 and we'll slice it off. Now this is a cross cut. Now this board is so big, it cross cuts no problem. If it was a narrow piece, then I'd want to use a chop saw. But in this case, it works great. Hold it down with one hand and push forward with the other. But I'm always looking right there, so no gap. Good. Now there's my leftover. It's less than an inch, and that's what it should be. Now the other way will vary. I need 19 and a half Width-wise. Now in my case, I'll have about two or three inches left. I may have some with six or eight inches. I may have some with a half inch. It just depends on the size of the boards that you glued together. Just keep your eye on that gap so nothing turns. So now my lid is cut to size and it is perfectly square all the way around. Now we can put it on and draw our lines to move on for the rolled edge. Now take your lid and figure out which side do I like best. There's a couple of knots on that side. This one has a couple of knots. Just which one do I prefer? This one has smaller knots, so I like this side better. So I want that side facing up on my nightstand. Now when you put it on, all that extra length and width, this is how it should measure out. I should have three and a half inches on my left and on my right and in the front. There is no overhang in the back. So here's an easy way to line it up. Turn it around to the back. There's no overhang. So I'm going to make it flat with my sides. Don't make it flat with your web frame. That's a quarter of an inch in from the back edges. It's going to be off if you do. So here and here flat. And all I have to do is measure three and a half here and here and it should make it straight. So there's three and an eighth. Move it out to three and a half, and I'll check there, and there's three and a half there, and now it's on straight. Okay, carefully turn it back around. We don't want it to move. Okay, there we go. If I take my tape measure and double check, perfect. Three and a half on the front. So now I have three and a half all the way around. Now normally you take a pencil, and you're going to trace around the bottom. For the demonstration, for the video, so you can see it, I'll use a marker, and it should still work just fine. I want it to be able to show up on the video. So make it nice and dark. So you got your left and your right, and then across the front. What I'm tracing is the footprint of the nightstand. Your nightstand may be a slight bit bigger or smaller than mine, and so the dimensions I give you will be different. So I needed a system that worked every time for every single instance. So in this case, we're making it customized. It has to fit within those lines. So now we'll move on. We have to trim this off, these pieces cut off, and we're going to roll them over. So now we're back at the table saw. We're going to make a cut. But we want to make sure these pieces are identified so we can line the grain back up, which I'll explain in a second. So I've got my line from my nightstand. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the table saw and slice right down in the middle of this distance, this three and a half, on all three sides. But I want to be able to put them back together again later. So again, I'm going to take my marker, <clears throat> and I like to mark them with numbers. One, and I circle it. One. My cut is going to go right here, so one and one. Two, two, and that's my cut. And three, three. There's my cut. 
Now, I also need a direction so that uh, I can put them back together again in the right order. I just put an arrow so they're both facing the same direction and I put arrows here facing each other, all right? So now it is marked. You have your ends at one and two and number three is the front edge. I want to cut it in order. Cut one, cut two, and then three last. So here we are at the table saw. I want to cut three and a half in half and that is one and five eighths. So set it to one and five eighths. And again, remember, that's the black mark that I have written on here with a marker. I've already marked it there for you. So set it to one and five eighths. And then you're going to cut one, two, and then three. So make sure you've got a push stick handy before you cut. So here's one, put it against the fence. All my pressure I want here at the bottom, not where the blade is. So cut here, I'm kind of pushing it in. Here. I'm barely holding it with my finger on this side. This is what's doing the pushing. I want my push stick to do the pushing. There's one. Flip it around. I'm doing number two. Again, push stick is doing most of the pushing. There's two. And now do number three. Last cut. There's number three. So now, if you look at the, uh, the top, I've cut that overhang in half with these three pieces. Now don't break them and don't lose them. The next step is we're going to take them, roll them over, and glue them back on again. Now here comes the trickiest part of the lid, is getting everything lined up correctly so that it looks good. So I put my pieces back together so everything lines up. One, one, two, two, three, three. Okay. Now when we roll the edge, all of these numbers should disappear, so it rolls like that. All right? That's where it's going to go, and I need to be able to see that line that I put on with the marker. If anything, it should be a, a little bit off of the line. I don't care if it lines up here on the edge if this is flush. Mine is not. I have a little overhang. We're going to trim that off anyway later. So uh, this line is all important. If I have it too far in, it'll be too tight, and it won't fit on my nightstand. So have it out, make sure to see that line, about a sixteenth of an inch off of the line. All right, now, this piece here rolls over like that. As you can see, it's too long, so we have to cut it. But where to cut it? Line it up so that the grain lines are perfect. The back here is nice and flush. All of my knot lines up, this lines up, everything lines up. I still have my first piece of wood lined up right here, but I know I need to cut it where that edge is, so I'm going to cut here on that side of the line. Repeat on the other side. Line up the grain. It's lined up in the back. All my grain lines line up. I have to cut it where this edge is. So right there is my line. I have to cut on that side of the line. So those are my cuts. You can see where the X is. I have to cut on that side of the line. So now take them to the chop saw and cut them both off on the X side of the line. Now that the ends are cut, now I can actually assemble the pieces there short enough to go on in the right place like that, staying away from that line. So here's how you attach it. Everything has to be glued, so I get the dust off a little bit, blow everything off of there. The glue holds a little better. Just take a bottle of glue, and I'm going to put a line all the way down this piece. I'm, I'm gluing on the part where the mark is, and then roll it over. Got to be away from that line. Flush left and right, but I don't care about the front, as long as you're about a sixteenth of an inch away from that line. Now, the glue tends to move, so I'm going to nail it in. Now, when you nail, make very, very sure that you're not nailing uh, on the outside edge, because my shaper that puts the decorative edge on will hit that nail. So I'm going to nail really close to the inside edge here, along where the line is. So get it lined up, or just right, and hold it in place, and then stick a nail here close to the edge, right there. Come to the other side, do it again, and then one in the middle. The closer to the edge, the better. Even if you miss, I can just rip the nail out and move on. Little glue squeeze out, perfectly fine. It's on the inside, you won't see it. Now we glue the other pieces. Now that the front's on, I put a little glue here and butt it up into the front, right there. So again, my numbers disappear. That's what I want. 
So I know you can't see it from the angle on the video, but I can still see my black line here. It's a little bit outside. And again, nail close to the line there, there, and one back here. Now I've had, had students make mistakes where they nail here close on the front, but the problem is now you're close to the other edge. So make sure you're as close to this line as you can possibly get. And then repeat on the last one. Bit of glue, some in the front so they hold together nice and tight. And then glue that on. That's away from the edge. It's close to perfect on the outside, but not quite. That will all be trimmed off in the next part. Okay, so my nails are on. Pieces are assembled. Nails are in. They don't go through, of course, because they're too short, but there is still a gap here that I need to get rid of. So the gap here, I have to squeeze it shut. So I have a few clamps that will do just that. They look like this. They're called wood clamps. Pretty simple. And you hold onto the handles and you twist them to get them to open or shut, depending on which way. So I put this on like that and just tighten it up. You want to tighten them both. Make it so both of these screws are closing. And then close it up. And I should see glue squeeze out. And that's exactly what I'm seeing. That's what I want. Turn it and repeat. Take your clamp, tighten it up a little bit. There we go, that should be pretty close. And then close it up by hand. Make sure they're both closing. Again, I should see a little glue squeeze out. Not much, but a little bit right there, and that's fine. And then do it on the last part. Close that up a little and put it on. Now I have a bunch of these clamps in the back, but if we run out, um, I have other clamps that we can use, or more likely we'll pull them off of dry lids. Okay, clamps are on, last step. You put a lot of work and effort into your lid. Now your name is sanded off, because we already sanded it off. Take a marker, a big bold marker, and put your name on it. Mr. E, A1, name and period, so we can always track it down. This is going to dry, and then we will put the decorative edge on next time.